really don't want people following you, well, then why are you out why are To a certain extent. I mean, you are putting out a public face, so it's, a, but it's an interesting question. It's interesting that it's, that it's, if it's ticking you off, it probably is ticking other people off, too. So, you know, that's, that's totally valid. Right? We had someone in yeah, it just seems to me that like you know when you're on Twitter, Twitter is the stalking place. Right. <laughs> some people call it following, some people call it stalking. <laughs>
So everything that you put up, every photo, every tweet, every Facebook status, I think the best thing is to think to yourself, this is going to be out there for the world for all time. Just imagine that, and if you feel comfortable with that, then, you know, go for it. And if you don't, then maybe think about setting more privacy limitations. But I think, for me, I put a lot out there, so that's just kind of who I am, and I think people respond to that. But, you know, fair lines. I've got a couple questions, but the first one is kind of the Yelp revolution as well. It's yes. to see how that's coming up. And yes. I guess my two main questions is how do you manage all of the social media? Because there's a lot of information out there. And also, how do you find the next trend? Like, we're talking about a four square creation phase. Yeah. Exactly. So, just. I find the latest trends on Mashable or um, social media or some kind of daily email. So I'm following people who I trust um, in the realm of social media, um, mostly through that, sometimes through Twitter, too. People, Guy Kawasaki, I really like. Um, I don't know, do you guys have, do you have a favorite or Twitter over here? I, source? Did, um, I follow um, a startup called Rosetta, which is a very fashionable account. Uh, um, I think it's uh, started by uh, Tarmesh, uh, Person and uh, I, I generally follow uh, uh, his group, uh, his uh, followers, Buzz, and Twitter, and Facebook, and uh, okay. And then, um, yeah, I think Yelp is great too. I didn't really talk a lot about Yelp, but Yelp is a great way to find restaurants and events and all this stuff. And then, did you have a second question? Well, my second question was with Yelp, like, because you also get a lot of different types of information, and right. the greatest advertising you can have is what about. Right. So how do you, I, I guess, how do you judge what is quality information other than just following people, following people you trust? I, I think that's the, I think that is the question with the internet right now, is, you know, how do you judge, and how do you know what's good information and what's junk? And I think we're all trying to figure it out. And, you know, Twitter's starting to do, like, verified accounts. Yelp just got busted for... Advertising, paid advertising, putting paid searches first without telling people that they were paid searches. It wasn't so they got extortion. Big trouble. Yeah. Wasn't it extortion like if you don't pay right. this, if you don't pay, then we're not going to take that bad yeah. for you. So they're in big, they're in hot water. So it's an interesting question, and I think it's probably the biggest issue around social media. So we trust and not how do you know what's real and what's junk? Um, two parts. One is I really enjoyed the presentation. Oh, great. Actually, I work for the school. My name is Anna Creek White. I'm in charge of alumni and external relations. Hey. 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 So I was really happy to be here cool. and listen to the presentation. Um, just an invitation to you, maybe, as well as everyone else, for having a panel discussion on May 12th at the PayPal campus. It's called Tweets, Tags, and Texts, Making Social Media Work for You. The RSVP will be live on our alumni events page at the business school this week, so if you'd like to come, please go ahead and register. And um, the second part of it really is a question because I think social media is effective for that base of 20 to 35 year olds. Um, and we're trying to struggle with how you, particularly in alumni relations, how are we reaching some of the more seasoned yeah. or the alumni that have been out of of school for a while. So I, I was just wondering if you have any thoughts on that, if you found best practices, what have you guys found about at Stanford? Right. So I know we're actually technically out of time. So what I would say is I can answer that question, but if you want to leave or if you need to leave, go ahead and leave so don't feel like it's rude. Uh, and then I'm also going to be at a table at lunch so we can talk more one-on-one -on -one there. So I'll just say thank you. And